All right, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to be trying uh, Dead Forest. It's one of those little visual novels. I haven't really played a visual novel in, gosh, I can't remember how long. So I decided to start with this one. Main character is Lakey. Apparently he's an outcast who wanders into the Dead Forest. Um, and thus begins our adventure. So let's begin. Tales, legends, and stories. Beasts crave to know them all. But only the story of the dead forest creates fear and superstition in their hearts. A kitten, a wolf cub, or a baby bird from their birth are strictly told. Beware of every way into that forest. About such a path, one of many, is the story. Okay, interesting. So apparently, it's something that a lot of the, the different races tell them, Hey, don't go into that forest. <clears throat> Strange smells. Rust leaves rustling and branches crunching underfoot. Even the wind playing in the crowns of trees and the slowly floating fog seemed completely alien. I'm probably going to butcher his name, so I'm just going to call him La Lakey. Lackey. I'm probably going to switch back and forth between that because I never really heard how to pronounce his name. So, Lakely. <clears throat> gosh. I'm already off to a bad start. <sighs> Damn it, Nay. You had one job. <laughs> Anyways, Lakey usually navigated through the forest without any problems, but this time he could say with certainty that he did not know where to go next. He stopped. Lakey had re already realized that continuing this journey in such a situation would not make any sense. Moreover, the Lynx was frightened by the prospect of getting completely lost. Okay, so he's a Lynx. We're establishing this. Interesting. <clears throat> no, the very idea of staying in the forest for quite some time was familiar to him. However, this place was exuding danger. Who knows what could happen here? It was better to leave. So apparently Lakey's wandered into the forest. This uh, dead forest. Sighing heavily, Lakey sat down on the, uh, the ground near a tree with a huge cobweb on its branches. Picking up a stick from a pile of leaves nearby, he began to draw complicated patterns in the, mist, in the moist soil. It was necessary to organize his thoughts. Now, is it, is it necessary to organize his thoughts, or is it because the stick was helping him organize his thoughts? <laughs> Lakey tried to recall his route. He left Nyukon. I can already tell I'm going to butcher a whole bunch of stuff throughout the series. <laughs> he left Nyukon, entered the forest, then walked near the stream for a long time, after which he discovered unusually large con coniferous trees. Not paying any attention to them, the lynx continued to walk, leaving marks on the bark of the trees until he ended up here. So I'm assuming he left the marks just so he had a way back? Then it seemed to him that that he was walking in circles. That's probably why he did that. It's a market to see if he was walking in circles. Anyways. However, when he decided to check his location, Lakey could not find any marks he left earlier, which to him had not been far from here. Ooh, I got lost. Uh. Uh. <laughs> there you go. It was a sigh. <laughs> not an uh. Sighing once more, he lowered his head and pulled his knees towards him as if trying to curl into a ball. What's wrong, little man? Probably shouldn't have crossed that stream. Ended up with the wrong direction. I should have... What are you doing here, kitten? A, s <laughs> a sound from somewhere above, slightly mocking at the same time threatening voice. 
Lakey bristled and jumped abruptly, his eyes searching for the source of the voice. On the branch of a tree directly above him sat a stranger, absolutely not moving. He had a confusing smile on his face. The lynx could not say a word. His, felt, his throat felt like it was dry. He was smelling danger now. But why did La Lakey not smell it earlier? Why did he not hear the sound of the stranger's movement, nor catch the sounds of his breath? I'm assuming that's a spider because of the the eyes. Like, that's the general eyes, and then, you know, they got the four, so that's... I'm assuming it's a spider. <laughs> Unfamiliar man. It's dangerous here. Beasts should usually avoid coming here. Lakey thought feverishly, given the stranger's appearance. Could it be that he is a spider? That's certainly an unusual beast, but what brings him here? But Lakey didn't want any trouble, so he kept silent questions to himself. Is this dead forest? The stranger seemed surprised. Dead forest? No, not here, little one. That forest is a little further. Lakey calmed down a bit. Apparently he wasn't going to attack him. Still not there? I see. The lynx dejectedly lowered his shoulders and hung his head. Where his own knowledge and skills were not enough to find the forest? The stranger jumped down silently and landed next to Lakey, touching the ground for a second. Why would you need to go there? Lakey shifted a few steps away from him, keeping his distance. He did not trust the stranger too much. However, there was nowhere else to get help from. Lakey felt that he had answers too. I need to find some ancient ruins. The stranger looked at him in, with an incredulous, incredulous expression. You never answered why. Lakey sighed. Sighed. Lakey sighed heavily from the umpteenth time of this incredibly long day. Gathering courage, he ventured to continue. I'm cursed. Cursed? The stranger's disbelief changed to a smile again. How interesting. Tell me. The lynx wanted to snap back, but told himself to calm down. It was obvious that the spider did not believe him, but who would? Yes, because of my curse, I can't get close to other beasts. My family and friends, they're gone. Gone? So they... Lakey... <laughs> Lakey hurriedly interjected before the spider could finish. No, they didn't die. They just disappeared, like vanished into thin air. One by one, everyone I lived with or interacted with just disappeared. Lakey broke off and looked away. It was hard to remember. The stranger listened quietly. The stranger listened silently with his arms folded. His smile gradually disappeared from his face, replaced by doubt. The elder from my village said that the curses don't just arise out of nowhere. I have to find out why I was cursed. And to find out, I have to go into the ruins of the dead forest and find the sacred spring there. A sacred spring. Yes, they say all my questions might be answered. Or the elder just kicked you out so the others wouldn't disappear. Dang, it's true though. The words of the stranger sounded harsh, but he was right. I was thinking that too. Lakey straightened his shoulders and started shaking, ridding himself of leaves and earth that had stuck to his clothes. He had to move on. In any case, I intend to find those ruins, and I will do what I was told to. I don't know what else may help. The spider squinted and quickly reduced the distance between them. I can escort you. I confess I know little about the dead forest, but I was always curious. However, I don't really want to. Lo Lakey suddenly felt guilty. This feeling was always inside him, devouring and spreading like a disease. Sometimes he felt quite physically he felt quite physical pain as if it were the wound pulsating inside him and he would do anything to get rid of it. He shivered, trying to get rid of the feeling. Just a stranger. It is not possible that he would disappear. So Lakey's basically worried this person might disappear if he gets close to him. He's 
kind of reminds me of a movie. I'm, I'm going to sit there and I'll probably have to bring it up in a future video. But there is a movie about a guy who, uh, when he got within a certain distance of people, they would just, they would die. Um, I may put the subtitles of the movie in here at a later time or I may just verbally say it. Either way, um, that's kind of the same same premise it sounds like because the people he gets close to they disappear just like in the movie with that guy who are people he gets close to die hearing only the end of such a predictable phrase Lakey shrugged he did not know how or why this was happening but the stranger was right again I see the lynx didn't know how else he could answer he was sure that he looked utterly miserable with his head down Lakey slowly walked in the direction he considered correct indicating that this conversation was over. It seemed inappropriate to ask more questions. Wait. The spider caught up with him and roughly grabbed his shoulder. Lakey froze. He had completely forgotten about caution. <laughs> if everything you said is true, I'll show you to the dead forest. I don't know if we can find those ruins, but it's definitely worth a try. But you... I don't particularly believe in curses. The stranger smiled. His fangs flashed for a second. His smile was slightly maniacal, although perhaps it was just seemed that way to Lakey. Besides, you look like an abandoned kitten. My morality won't let me sleep if I let you go without even showing you the way. Lakey blinked slowly, not knowing how to react. The grip on his shoulder was solid, and the lynx wondered how strong the stranger really was. That way's wrong. We head northwest. What's your name? Lakey. The lynx didn't comprehend the question at first. It seemed too unreal that the mysterious stranger actually decided to help him. Good. My name's Claude. I will hope we will get along. So, okay. Nice to meet you, Claude. I'm trying to remember all that. I'm horrible with names, just for FYI in the future. I'm going to have problems mis mis <laughs> misnaming them, probably. So... Yeah. Anyways. The smile... The uh, smile. The spider bared his teeth in a smile again and finally released his grip, pushing Lakey in the right direction. Come on. After they crossed the border of the dead forest... Oh, this is a big difference right there. <laughs> they seemed to be covered in an invisible veil. The lynx felt anxiety and tension hanging in the air as if the forest was trying to warn him. It went from vibrant and peaceful to completely foggy. Oof. Lakey shivered. It seemed like the air became colder, even though the sun was just as bright. That's what happens when you have mist in the air, the fog that causes that, that to happen. Even thinking about it, the lynx could not tell for sure which direction they were going. The landscape all, all around seemed suspiciously feverish, and the smells were incredibly muted. No wonder Leaky got lost here. Huh. So he's been here before? But Claude, his new acquaintance, seemed to know the way. He was navigating by methods incomprehe incomprehensible to Leaky. Of course he was not complaining. He was just grateful to the spider who had decided to help him despite all the dangers. It's getting cold here. Lakey, who finally decided to break the silence, quickened his pace, trying to shake off the unpleasant feeling. Yes, this place is called the Cold Valley, after all. Even cubs know about it. Claude smiled again, but this time Lakey did not feel threatened or embarrassed. Never heard of it. Neocon is far from here, and its inhabitants rarely come here, and those who do, they... avoid contacting me. I thought so. Claude slowed down and frowned as if gathering his thoughts. This valley doesn't allow for any mistakes. If you stumble and fall, or if you don't follow the path, you'll never find your way, and you'll freeze to death. It's said this happened because of the Wraith of Evi, an ancient deity, but it's quite possible that that, that is just a legend. I won't advise you to blindly believe in it. I really haven't heard of it. Now you have. In any case, be careful. 
The spider waved vaguely, as if indicating the misty terrain around them. Indicating the misty terrain around them. Lakey nodded in understanding and quickened his step. He did not want to stay here for a long time. That was what he believed in, and he believed in curses. Ouch. The spider hissed softly behind him, and Lynx turned around instantly. Claude paused for a second, holding his left side in his hand. What the hell happened? Fear sh shackled Lakey. Is this soon? What happened? Claude gestured with his free hand. Don't worry about me, kitten. Look after yourself. Pale as a ghost. I think Lakey's uh, worried that Claude's going to disappear because of this curse. It's an old wound, and sometimes it hurts. Like when the weather changes. Nothing serious. It hurts as you walk? No, it's alright. I just feel it, that's all. I'm used to it. Lakey was not very convinced by the spider's words and anxiety was written all over his face. I told you to stop it. Claude's voice was unexpectedly low and threatening and Lakey decided not to argue. If I had herbs, it could ease your pain a little. I don't know if there are any herbs that would help here, and unfortunately, the situation isn't so deplorable to waste our time on it. It seemed that Claude had returned to his positive attitude. After massaging his side, he continued to walk as if nothing had happened. However, the spider stopped again almost instantly. The lynx looked at him, wondering if his wound was tormenting again, but this time Claude looked focused and serious. This is what I think. We need to separate. There should be a path somewhere, the one that will lead us out of the valley, but we must try to find it. You will smell it immediately, the smell of beasts and imper imperfect animals. They use this path to get out. But we are going without any path, aren't we? And the creatures like us don't stay alive, usually. Lakey felt a bit uncomfortable. Split up. Do not go into the wilds. It won't end well. If anything happens, call. With no chance to object, Leaky was left alone. He thought of how much longer the spider was. How much of a loner the spider was. He was probably used to deceive, deciding everything by himself. While Leaky, on the contrary, lied on others too much. When were the when when there were others to rely on, anyways? Driving off sad thoughts, he sniffed in search of a path. Claude said that the lynx could find it by its smell, but so far everything was calm in the air. Looking around, he decided to go back, when, out of the corner of his eye, he noticed something strange in the high grass behind the bushes. Something glistened in the rays of the setting sun. Going a little closer, Lakey, Lakey recognized the, the crystal lily, a plant quite rare in this area. It seemed part of the landscape and merged the vegetation around. Its almost transparent petals reflected sunlight like precious, uh, precious glass, and the glints of light danced around it as it swayed slightly. Leggy thought that this flower could help ease Claude's pain. Of course, this one alone would not be enough if he could only find some more ingredients. So, we have three choices. Crawl or run to the bushes, go around the bush, come back. Let's go around the bush. Deciding to pick the flower and take it with him, Lakey approached the, approached the bush and looked at the small gap near the ground where he could crawl. However, this path, this path did not seem to be the easiest, partly because the bushes could be walked over a little distance away. He went there instead. With one hand touching the thin branches, the lynx walked into the tall grass and slowed down. Looking around, he began to search for the crystal lily. Uh, where is it? Lakey was sure that the rare plant was sparkling right here. Stooping slightly and carefully pushing the grass apart with both hands, he moved forward, peering closely at the greenery in front of him. Where? Lakey didn't want to give up and go back empty-handed. Paying less attention, he leaned over lower to the ground, trying to smell the flower. He didn't notice the big old root sticking out of the ground. <laughs> I was going to say he hit his head. 
Lakey stumbled and rolled down a fairly steep slope without any time to react. The lynx, with all the force he had, tried to clutch at something but only hit his elbows, knees and shoulders on stone protruding from the ground. There were no longer trees, shrubs, or even grass. Nothing to grab, only bare, stony ground. Ooh. Lakey stopped his fruitless attempts to slow his fall and now only tried to protect his head. Finally, after painfully hitting a huge cobblestone with his side and shoulders, he came to a stop. Ugh. The lynx immediately tried to get up but could not. His whole body ached, but the right leg did not move at all. Feeling it with his fingers, Lakey winced in the pain. His ankle was twisted. He could walk on it, but first he had to get up. However, it was impossible to do that. It seemed to Lakey that a thick white fog was floating inside his head, the same fog which was floating before his eyes. The forest is taking him. Looking around obsessively, he saw only the mist. As far as he could tell, there were no trees in this hollow, and the ground beneath him was very cold to the touch. The large stone that stopped his fall was almost icy, and the lynx tried to move away from it, feeling like cold was seeping into him. Claude? Anybody? Hey! With difficulty, he moved away a little. With fading surprise, Lakey found himself all that not only the stone was cold. Okay, that's weird. The very air around him enveloped him in the icy chains, preventing him from moving. Claude? I'm here! First, his fingers began to go numb. Lakey rubbed them with all his strength, but his body did not obey him anymore. The temperature continued to fall. Oh god, did I just... Am I gonna die right out the gate? The lynx was in panic. He frankly tried to get up again, and his legs were already frozen to the bone. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, aren't I? Ah. Leave it to me. Help! Claude, somebody, help me! I'm stuck! In a rage, he stuck his he struck his numb legs, feeling them nothing with his fists. He tried to cause at least pain or a rush of blood, but he felt nothing. Only the soft sound of the blows that were reminding him he was still not moving. Lakey lowered his hands and fell back with a sigh. He was very tired. It seemed to him that if he rested a little, he could then wake up, gain strength, and get out of here. Oh, that's not a good sign. Don't fall asleep, bro. You will die. Climb up the hill. Pick the crystal lily. Preserve it to help Claude. How did he have the strength to think about anyone anyone else? Lakey couldn't explain it himself, but clinging to someone else's life seemed a lot easier than clinging to his own. What's important is you don't sleep, Lakey, because if you do, I guarantee you, you will pass away. He was seized with stillness, trying to do, trying to say something to himself. Oh. He was seized with stillness. Trying to say something to himself, Lakey moved his lips barely, but made no sound. Consciousness began to leave him. Give me your hand. Lakey pricked up his ears. The icy wind carried, carried words, and when he turned around, he saw the briar bushes turning green and the sun's rays caressing the leaves. See, see, now it looks like he's out of the dead forest. Give me your hand. Don't worry. I'll help you. The voice was none other than his own. For a moment, Lakey was overwhelmed by a wonderful vision from his childhood, or even a dream. Here he is, just a cub, having run in the forest in search of berries when he came across a trap with a ferocious fox cub inside. The fox's black and brown fur was stained with blood, and his eyes, one black and one blue, turned with hatred and fear, or burned with hatred and fear. So that's the blue, that's the black. So he's like a two, uh, I forget what they call that. People who have two uh, different colors in their eyes. Those eyes are the scariest thing in the world. I'll get you out of here. But who said that phrase? A whitest mist, obscure, a wi a whitest mist obscured the distant summer memory and brought Lakey back to the cold valley. He swallowed and tried to open his mouth, feeling the frost catch on his lips. Who are you? Oh, snap. It's that fox. The black silhouette of a beast bowed in front of him. In his suit-colored figure, in his suit-colored figure, the features of an almost forgotten face were vaguely discernible. An azure gleam in his eye and a cruel smile. Give me your hand. Don't be afraid. I'll help you. 
Lakey felt that hand on his own. It warmed his hand while everything else inside was frozen and turned to ice. The valley disappeared again. Lakey walked home hand in hand with the fox cub. Whoops. <laughs> I hit the right mouse. I hit the right, right mouse button. <laughs> nay, you twat. Here are the familiar apple trees blossoming next to the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing at my mess up. Uh, let's try it. Okay. Straight face, do it again. Here are the familiar apple trees blossoming next to the kitchen. Here's the well from which he and the mother uh, take water. And his mother take water, okay. Only the water in it is frozen with a visible cold stream, and the ground where his feet had trodden is covered with ice. Black fox, he will bring trouble upon us. Your son brought the black fox. Send him away. Kill him. Kill the fox. He will bring down a curse. Kill. Kill. So, this guy brought the black fox back. So not only are they superstitious against him, but the lynx, but also the fox. The fox is considered a bad curse as well, apparently. But the white fog again took away both the warm summer and the other people's voices. Fainter and fainter, Lakey heard their screams. The rhythm of his failing heart, too, became more and more muffled. Oh, is this kid dying? Lakey, Lakey blinked and exhaled wearily. Nothing had changed. He was still here in the cold valley. Only the black shadow didn't appear. Didn't disappear. Still clutching his hand. It's getting late. You're so cold. I'll help you sleep. Yes, that's how it ends. Everything led to this. Lakey slowly lowered his eyelids, bringing back images to those he would soon see. I guess that was the introduction. Now I'm seeing the credits. Was that the shortest one I've ever done? Did I die? Did I actually die? Did I just get like the quickest ending to a game in in the history of graphic visual novels? Oh my god. I'm I'm sorely sitting here like they don't roll credits like this unless it's to an end. I myself think I'm cursed because I swear if this is the bad ending or the ending to or one of the endings to the game, I've barely played it and I've already managed to get killed. I seem to have this thing. It's like I played trapped, got the bad ending, died almost immediately. That seems to always follow me. The end. Fuck. <laughs> I have not even gotten past the chapter and I killed my character. Oh. <laughs> I cannot believe. <laughs> All right. I'm going to end this here. I managed to kill myself. Oh, Lord. That's embarrassing because it seems like I, I watch all these other people and they play this game and they're like, or not this game, but a game. And they always go through and they're always like, eh, here, you do this, do that, do that. And I get it here and I put my hands on a game and I automatically get killed. That's why I'm always saying I'm going to die. Because I get the feeling I'm always making the worst possible choices. I can't believe I freaking did this. Alright, well, that was my first playing of Dead Forest. I'm going to play again, obviously. Maybe after I've had time to kind of mull over my actions <sighs> bloody hell that has to be the shortest visual novel I think anyone has played I have set like a, a world's record anyways 
There'll be more of these once I can figure out how not to get myself killed right away. I seem to have that, that really big knack of impending doom. So with that, I'll let you all go. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.